asked, how are you feeling today while I was throwing up into a plastic wash basin? I've been asked, as I was emerging from a four-hour operation with a tube in every orifice, how are you feeling today? I'm waiting for the moment when somebody asks me this question, and I'm dead. I'm a little sorry I'll miss that. The Fairy Queen, this is not. And I was dismayed to discover that the play would contain elements of humor. I've been, at best, an unwitting accomplice. It is not my intention to give away the plot, but I think I'd die at the end. You have cancer. See? Unforgettable. It was something of a shock. I had to sit down. Please sit down, Miss Baring. You have advanced metastatic ovarian cancer. Go on. You are a professor, Miss Baring. Like yourself, Dr. Kalikian. Well, yes. Now then, you present with a growth that, unfortunately, went undetected in stages 1, 2, and 3. Now it is an insidious adenocarcinoma, which has spread t from the primary adexal max. Insidious? Insidious means undetectable, Adam. Insidious means treacherous. Shall I continue? By all means. But if you think eight months of cancer treatment is tedious for the audience, consider how it feels to play my part. All right, all right. It's Friday morning, grand rounds. Action. Dr. Barron? Dr. Kalikian. Jason. Oh, yes. Uh, Professor Baring, how are you feeling today? Fine. That's fine. That's great. That's just great. Grand rounds. The term is theirs. Here, rounds seems to signify darting around the main issue, which I suppose would be the struggle for life. My life with heated discussions of side effects, other complaints, additional treatments. The primary site is here, the left ovary. Metastases are suspected in the peritoneal cavity here and here. Grand Rounds is not Grand Opera, I assure you. Uh, but compared to lying here, it is positively dramatic. Full lymphatic involvement. Full of subservience, hierarchy, gratuitous displays, sublimated rivalries. I feel right at home. It's just like a graduate seminar. This is much easier. I just hold still and look cancerous. Requires less acting every time. Evidence of primary site sink shrinkage. I can recall the time, the very hour of the very day, I knew words would be my life's work. It was my fifth birthday. I like that one best. I think I'll read the tale of the philopsy bunnies the tale of the flopsy bunnies it has little bunnies on the front the tale of the flopsy bunnies by beatrix potter <gasps> it is said that the effect of eating too much lettuce is so poor stop or what is that word? Sound it out. Sabor-fi super Superific! What does that mean? So perific, causing sleep. I mean, wait till I get a lab of my own if I can survive this, this uh, fellowship. The part with the uh, human beings? 
okay, everybody's got to go through it. All the great researchers, they want us to be able to converse intelligently with the clinicians as though researchers were the impediments. And the clinicians are such troglodytes, so smarmy. I mean, we have to hold hands to discuss creatinine clearance. I mean, just cut the crap, I say. Jason, are you going to be sorry when I... Um, do you ever miss people? Well, everybody asks that, especially girls. And what do you tell them? Well, I, I tell them yes. Are they waited? Um. Some. I see. And what do you say when a patient is apprehensive, frightened? Of who? I just... never mind. Professor Barry, who's the President of the United States? I'm fine. Really. It's all right. Are you sure? I mean, I could order a test and we can check out no. to make sure that... No, no, no. I'm fine. All right, well, look, I've got to go. Just keep pushing the fluids. Try for 2,000 a day, okay? Okay. To use your word, okay. So, the young doc, like the senior researcher, prefers research to humanity. At the same time, the senior scholar in her pathetic state as a simpering victim, wishes the young doctor would take more interest in personal contact. Now I suppose we shall see through a series of flashbacks that the senior scholar ruthlessly denied her simpering students the touch of human kindness she now seeks. Now then, how would you characterize you? Huh? How would you characterize the animating force of the sonnet? Huh? In this sonnet, what is the principal poetic device? I'll give you a hint. It has nothing to do with football. But what propels the sonnet? Um, um, uh. Now, did I say you're 19 years old? You're so young. You don't know a sonnet from a cheesesteak. By no means. Vivian, there's something we need to talk about. You need to think about. My cancer's not being cured, is it? Uh-uh. Never expected it to be, did they? Now, that certainly was a maudlin display. Popsicles? Sweetheart? I can't believe my life has become so corny. It can't be helped. I don't see any other way. We're discussing life and death. And not in the abstract either. We're discussing my life and my death. Now is not the time for verbal swordplay, for unlikely flights of imagination and wildly shifting perspectives for metaphysical conceit, for wit. And nothing could be worse than a detailed scholarly analysis, erudition, interpretation, complication. Now is the time for simplicity. Now is the time for, dare I say it, kindness. I thought being extremely smart would take care of it. I see that I've been found out. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, God. I want... I... 
I want. No, I want to hide. I just want to curl up in a little ball. I want to tell you how it feels. I want to explain it to use my words. It's as if I can't. There aren't. I'm like a student, and this is the final exam, and I don't know what to put down because I don't understand the question, and I'm running out of time. <laughs> The time for extreme measures has come. I'm in terrible pain. Susie says that I need to begin aggressive pain management if I'm to stand it. It. Such a little word. In this case, I think it signifies being alive. I trust this will have a soporific effect. Well, I don't know about that, but it sure makes you sleepy. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's that so horrific means makes you sleepy. It does? <laughs> mm -hmm, yes. <laughs> well, that was pretty dumb. Oh, no, 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 no. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, in a dumb sort of way. <laughs> I never would have gotten it. <laughs> I'm glad you explained it. <laughs> I, I am a teacher. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the Runaway Bunny by Margaret Wise Brown Once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away, so he said to his mother, I am running away. If you run away, said his mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a trout stream, and I will swim away from you. If you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman, and I will fish for you. Look at that, a little allegory of the soul. No matter where it hides, God will find it. See, Vivian? It's time to go. And flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Professor Baring, how are you feeling today? 3 p.m. Hydration totals 2,000 in, 30 out. Uh-oh. That's it. Kidney's gone. Professor Baring. Highly unresponsive. Wait a second. Wait a second. Jesus Christ. Call a code! Blue Five. Seven. Oh, seven. What are you doing? A goddamn code. Get over here. One. She's DMR. Two. She's research. She's One. no code. Ow! God damn it, Susie! She's no code! Oh, God! Well, he oh. can put the order in. You saw it. You were right there, Jason. Oh, God, the code. Oh. 4575. <laughs> Cancel code, room 707. Sue Monahan, primary nurse. Cancel code. Dr. Posner is here. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> 